Hello there. Today I'm delighted to present you with a comprehensive guide on professionally handling online criticism, negative comments, and truths which are directed to your pastor or your church. Now, in today's digital age, I want you to understand that blogs and social media platforms are places where negative comments or attack or criticism can occur. And as representative of Christ, we need to understand that we have a responsibility, we have a duty to be able to respond professionally, scripturally, helping people to understand our faith as far as serving the Lord is concerned. And if we must do this, we need to do it with grace, with wisdom, and with professionalism. And walk with me as I take you through simple steps and guide that will help us do this professionally. So, first thing first, we must learn to hold back from responding to indirect comments which are directed to our churches or to our pastors. You see, if the criticism is not directed or posted directly to your page, then I would advise you not to engage or respond to such comments. This is because it is unlikely that you know such a person in real life. It is best to avoid unnecessary banter, confrontation, and it is important for you to maintain your focus and to rather engage in fruitful interactions with people who drop comments on your page, on your wall, on your space. But when these take place outside of your space, avoid them and let them do what they want to do in their space. Now the scripture made us to understand in the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 and I read that let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. This is important. You are making sure that whatever happens within that space, as far as you are a rep of Jesus Christ, you are going to make sure that whatever you post, whatever your response will be, are going to be seasoned with grace. They are going to be seasoned with wisdom. After all, it's not every comment you should respond to. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28, that even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their thoughts. So learn to hold back from responding to indirect comments that are directed to your church or to your pastor. Avoid it completely. Why? Because that comment or criticism is not happening on your page or on your wall. Two, always exercise respectful responses. When comments are left on your page, it is important to respond respectfully, regardless of the intention behind them. Remember, some individuals genuinely seek the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And others also have their own motives. Regardless, respond with respect and provide biblical references to support your claims. In doing this, you can foster constructive dialogue. In doing this, you would help people know more about our Jesus. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your heart, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to answer everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So that is our anchor hope. When people ask genuine questions, remember on your platform, respond respectfully. Three, learn to reflect Christ in your interaction. You see, always bear in mind that you represent Jesus Christ in your online interaction. 
So it is essential to avoid making enemies out of those those who hold different views, who hold different opinions, who hold varied mindsets regarding our Lord Jesus Christ. Instead, seek to build bridges and showcase the love and understanding that Christ represented. The book of John chapter 13 verse 34 to 35 says that a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Four, educate instead of arguing. Engaging in argument really leads to positive outcomes. So instead of engaging in heated debate and argument, I will encourage you to focus on educating your online audience, your online community, by providing well-reasoned explanations, sharing the truth with a spirit of humility. This approach can help diffuse tension and it will help promote understanding. Many of us Christians, we are, we are kind of a bit unreasonable when it comes to this phase, as far as our interactions online are concerned. Not everybody will hold the same opinion with you, as far as your faiths are concerned. So when you come across an, a situation like this, learn to educate instead of engaging in argument and heated debate. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 24 to 25, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponent must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading them to a knowledge of the truth. So educate your audience instead of arguing. Five, ignoring truths and restricting accounts is something you must learn to do if you must avoid negative comments directed at your church, your pastor, and your faith. Identify comment from truth, individuals who intentionally provoke or mislead can be challenging. However, it is best to ignore such comments and if possible, restrict such accounts or accounts that are associated with such person. Because this action protects your online uh, community from negative influence and it can also ensure a more encouraging environment for visitors. Proverbs 14 7 says that what well, stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. So, in conclusion, you must learn to avoid every necessary attack, comment, criticism, and important truths that are directed towards your church, your pastor, and your faith. I pray for you that as you practice this thing, the Lord will give you grace to do this even the more, so that together we can spread the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, so we can change life all around us. God bless you.